Yo, welcome to DJ Hustle Podcast. Our special guest today, producer West Coast. Man, this dude has done records for everybody in the industry, and he's knocking things out of the park. Uh, West Coast, what's happening, brother? What's good with you, bro? Man, West Coast is in the house. Where you at now? You in Vegas? You in London? Where you at, man? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in uh, sunny Las Vegas. Okay, Nevada. okay. Yeah. How is hip-hop in Vegas? Um, It's different. Okay. It's different. Not like uh, like what it was out in California. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a different uh, texture to it, right. and the the culture is like real different. Okay, okay. You've been a West Coast veteran, and your name was West Coast. I know that means a lot to you. Um, for for people for people who don't understand about West Coast, the producer. Um, yeah. How did you get inspired to start producing music, and what got you into? Um, I started young. I was. Uh, while I was I was still like in school and stuff okay. like I started school age so um though I was like in a band when I was in junior high mm. at Willowbrook and in Los Angeles or actually Compton Unified School District let me okay. put that together in Willowbrook Junior High and at Davis Middle School gotcha. um by the time I got to my high school which was Centennial High School mm -hmm. you know all my mother to all my partners out here in the music industry right right uh, that's when I got more um, in tune with music as a profession versus okay. just, you know, music and playing music. Okay, okay. So you was booming in the band. So you had a band crack in it. Was you was you drumming? Was you playing tuba? What horn? What, what was you playing? My uh my uh initial instrument, like my ideology to music, was I was a percussionist. Okay. So I did all everything drum until I got to high school, and then once I got to high school my band director, uh, which oddly enough, just recently turned 82 oh. with Roberts. Wow. He was at Centennial High School all the time I was there. And, you know, years prior, um, he uh, told me if I'm going to be a true percussionist, mm -hmm. then I need everything that's a percussion instrument. Right. And being young, I only thought I needed to learn more drums. <laughs> exactly. He, uh, he guided me into like learning piano, which is a percussion instrument. I was even playing timpanis and uh, that and stuff like that. We actually ended up going to Florida A&M mm. to be a part of 100 because I was so earnestly um, searching, searching and, and like seeking to do more stuff musically. Right. Okay. Okay. So being in a band has helped you become this producer not beat maker, but producer, because you you can actually play different instruments and fill all those voids in, in the whole of music. So with hip hop, so what, what got you into really producing as far as like hip hop records? How'd you get your feet wet into that? Um, my first check ever uh, came by way of Terry Carter. Um, rest in peace, Terry Carter, um, sure. owner of Heavyweight Records. Mm -hmm. And at the time he was managing a group known by the world uh, named Snoop Dogg presents the East Siders. I remember. Terry was looking for actually for an engineer mm. and he elicited myself. And at the time he elicited uh, my homeboy. Uh, he's like my brother in music, uh, Terrace Martin. Mm -hmm. So okay. he was producing records and I was engineering at the time. And then uh, during that time, hanging around Snoop and everybody, Goldie, um, Trady, like all of the East Siders and the rest of the Snoop camp. Right, right, um, right. Me and Terrace got real close and we started to trade secrets. Okay. Because um, okay. I had a musical background already, even though I was initially elicited as an engineer. Yeah. Um, me and Terrace got closer together. So I would do more musical stuff that Terrace would teach me and we would go mm -hmm. back and forth to Terrace more um, engineer or like studio stuff. Right. Saying. Um, and even like some of the business stuff, like when it came to uh, producing records for movies and TV shows, and getting seen, stuff like that. Man, you, you've done a lot of stuff for TV, you've done stuff for a lot of movie stuff. Um, I, I, I looked up to disc your discography, man, and I was like really impressed. I mean, not, not just hip hop, not just Snoop, but TV shows, and they're still running to this day, you're still doing it. So, what inspires you to keep going through the music? Cause I know the music has changed from the early, late eighties to early nineties. What keeps you inspired to keep going and producing? 
Um, honestly, my kids, you know, um, you know, my kids, but when I was fresh in the music, mm -hmm. I had kids, you know, cause I was young. and then like years went by and it wasn't until I was 25, I had my first kid, mm -hmm. my little daughter. Okay. And, uh, she was an extreme preemie. So just the thought of having to try to take care of a kid that yeah. didn't greatest start mm -hmm. and that kind of had me like a little frazzled right. to the point where I was like, if I'm going to do this music thing, music got to pay for everything. Right. So how right. Can I do more to make sure that music pays for everything. I can't just be a producer of such and such rapper, uh, you know, or just making beats or some stuff like that. I can't just do that. I got to um, get all the checks. I can get. Hey, I'm, I'm not mad at you at all. I mean, you, you're a hell of a, you're a hell of a lyricist. You're a hell of a writer. You're a hell of a, you know, producer. Um, you, you made, you made some noise, a lot of noise here in LA and you made a lot of noise across the country too. Um, right. what made you want to come to go to Vegas and to just, you know, are you trying to blow that up too? Like you did LA? You know, initially I came to Vegas to like take a break. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to just get away from the music scene. <laughs> get <all> you back. <laughs> I, but, um, when I got out here, a good friend of mine that uh, used to do a lot of work with a promoter, a huge promoter named Bobby D. Mm -hmm. um, oh boy, Dave Leon. Shout out to Dave too, uh, because he owns a conglomerate of production buildings. Mm. He found out that I was out here and was like, bro, you got to put a studio on one of my buildings. Yes. Yeah. So we got together and figured it all out. And I put a studio in a building of his that I manage. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and then um, that wasn't enough room for me. Mm. So I went and got like a, sec a second building, okay. um, old building, and put a studio along with a kitchenette and like a shower and a room and everything. So that way it's self contained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's cool. And I have artists fly out from Universal Music Group predominantly, but also from other entities gotcha i let them license the room or the building for the month yeah that's dope do big projects um all of the stuff that i play close to the neck mm -hmm. um i deal with it at my my um smaller uh more personal more private gotcha. um down there and actually it's close to the strip okay okay three minutes or something like that away from las vegas boulevard so you keep it moving and grooving then. So you ain't playing around, man. You uh got studio, two studios in Las Vegas. Um, mm -hmm. who are you working with right now as an artist in Vegas right now? I know you got some of them. What you cooking? Um, yeah, actually under my my label, that's McLean Music Group. Um, I have the Vegas' very own Jameson. Uh -huh. And Jameson came to me, oddly enough, on like a fluke. Mm. Um and when he came to me, we start working on a record and I had um, had him come down to the studio while I had another colleague of mine in the music industry, DJ Rogers Jr. Mm, okay. Was there with me. So we um, had, I had him come down and DJ was there. Okay. Um, and we start working on a record uh, called Make This Money okay. because he was about his life and how he lives his lifestyle. And you know, like what a day in the life is with him. Um, his wife, you know, which is uh, she dances, and then how he has like a little girl and a little boy, but somehow their crazy life kind of works. Yeah. And it's like the moniker for his lifestyle, like how he's he's centered around it. Okay. Um, and uh, we did that first record, and after that, um, when he starts seeing like some of the accolades on the wall. And started, you know, digging a little deeper, Googling me, Googling mm -hmm. DJ, about like who we kind of were. Right. And was, hey, bro, is there a way that I can get a situation? Like, what's... <laughs> and what I saw out of him most importantly, mm -hmm. he had a willingness and an eagerness to learn and to absorb yeah. everything that he could. He felt like he had like so much talent, but if he was just to get around the right people, that was straightforward with them, that were knowledgeable in this music industry, but also not stingy with none of the knowledge, that were like givers and sharers of the knowledge and etiquette of mm -hmm. the music. 
like just the music side, but also the business side of it as well. Right. Um, he was like a sponge. Mm. So that was my first inclination on like maybe we should do more work together. Yeah. You know, and he's very, very, very um, hardworking, very, very driven type of individual. Like he wants to do whatever it's going to take to make it all come together. That's you know, it, there is no big me, little you, even in our, our times in the studio, mm. when we're projects are creating the visuals for some of this stuff. There's never a time where we uh, like butt heads mm. really um, because there's that mutual sense of respect. Um, I respect him and his drive and his heart um, and his talent and skill level. And he respects mine. Yeah. Um, so that's like huge. Um, a little bit after that, um, another well-known name to most uh, homes, uh, one third of the, the, the members of the Dove Shack yeah. came to me as well and wanted to work on a project um, aside from the Dove Shack, mm -hmm. but somewhat incorporating them, you know? Oh, okay. Wanted to be able to do a solo project, but right. not just be labeled as a solo artist so that way he wouldn't negate the group. Got that, that makes made, sense. Um, and I told him when we talked about it back and forth, and then he remembered me a lot in certain circles, especially with Snoop and yeah, stuff. Right. He was just more and more verified in the fact that if he was going to work with anybody, he preferred for it to be me. Why so, not? I mean, you are one of the best producers on the West Coast. So why, why would he not want to work with the West Coast a producer? Extraordinary. Even in his so I made a lot of phone calls on his behalf mm -hmm. to get people involved um, as well as he did, you okay. know. His, uh, his 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 album, the Cold Peace Project, by C Knight of the Dove Shack, um, is riddled with um, seasoned platinum lyricists, all the way down to brand new artists that are newly signed to his label. Okay. As an as an independent label, uh, so and there was no again there was no big me little use or nothing in that situation so like you know that was another reason why i chose to like you know what this seems like a good idea let's let's, let's give this a hand yeah you are talking out of the park bro that's what's up you're talking vegas out of the park you're taking it you're taking it day by day artist by artist i can see you uh having a whole compound down in vegas bro i, I see it happening and i'm gonna tell you something else you you helped me make my dream come true too as a produ producer so be oh, yeah. for me not a, not a producer let's get it right <laughs> a producer, I make beats. So let's get that straight. Um, you know, we, we we've done albums together. And you you basically held my hand all the way through, and um, yeah. uh, streets. I, it was it was dope, bro. And um, we're gonna do some more work. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna give you your flowers, roses, and carnations now while you around. So I can, we can talk crazy to each other. So it's all good on the gas, man. Um, if, if anyone out there hasn't noticed who uh, West Coast is, Google West Coast. Straight up, he's a legendary yeah. producer. He's a, he's in LA all the time. He's in Las Vegas all the time. So if you if you if you are from LA and you out in Vegas getting your party on and you want to get into the studio, hit West Coast up. He's a all platforms West Coast. You can catch him on Facebook, you can catch him on Instagram, catch him on Twitter, all that good stuff. West Coast, man. You know that's how we get in. You know, yeah. um, what else you got going for you, Wes? And Hawaii, you know, let's there let's not there too, you know, um, because even when I left, because I was in Hawaii for. Like, like five years or so, something about that. Yeah, it was under for a while. Immediately, I started, like, soon as I got there, like, everybody tapped in with me. So I was working with uh, Fiji, Lagos, uh, CLC, Three Houses Down, Kavini Vital, yeah. uh, BT, um, our, well, they like to be called Blessed Every Time Now. Yeah. Um, uh, um, the original group to do the remix for the official remix for Bruno Mars, I Want to Be a Millionaire, mm -hmm. uh, for Hawaii. Wow. Um, and then, obviously, Bye -bye. All Bye -bye. Street, you know, the Voice of the Streets, Long Beach, Voice of the Streets, Reality, mm -hmm. Voice of the Streets, Timeless, uh, which is like growing and growing and growing. Like so many people are checking in and listening to it. A lot of people yeah. love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they, and they really appreciate the, 
differences in the musicality. Like each voice of the street does not sound the same. No, not at all. They each got five, even though that they were created by the same um, individuals as far as musically wise. Mm-hmm. But um, even if you were just to listen to just the music and you didn't listen to none of the lyricists, musically, they still sound like three separate projects. And they got the funk twist to the G-funk in there, you know what I mean? So on purpose, on purpose yeah. you know what I mean? So <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we get a book out you, man? Can we, you gonna write a book? Or are you gonna write a movie screen play about yourself? Can we see that in the future? You know what? I thought about that. Me and a good friend of mine, Chico Brown, uh, were uh, in a meeting with Master P and mm-hmm. we were talking the the notion of doing a movie. Okay. Where I didn't want to do a biopic, like I'm not that, but um, doing like a movie that was kind of sort of uh, based around real life experiences. Right. Just want to name it after me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That'll work. I don't want to say prideful. I'm just not. I'm not that guy. Okay. You know, I'd rather you know stand behind the curtains and let everyone else enjoy. The, the spotlight aka push you out front i'm in the back is that, is that what you want to call it you want to call it that i'll push you out front and i'll be in the back i'm like no no, no. don't you want to be the star <laughs> no 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 that's you you the star you know what i'm saying you and your dr pepper over there you know getting it in getting it cracking so oh, when yeah. you come back to la man cream soda dr pepper this is oh, that. that's the difference <laughs> you were fancy <laughs> it has a big difference. Cream soda is good. So when you come back to LA in the studio, man, what, what can we get something out of you, out of you from LA? Um, I was just out there uh, working on some stuff because uh, you know I have four studios in California. Um, I have one uh, still in Burbank. Mm-hmm. Uh, shut it down initially, and then I just reopened it because there was no reason to shut it down. Uh, so one in uh, downtown Burbank one in North Hollywood, one in Hollywood, and another one in San Pedro. Uh, but I was at the Hollywood one, um, oddly enough, a little bit ago, and we were working on some stuff. So yeah, always stay on the lookout for me. Um, every once in a while, I like keep people, you know, kind of guessing, because mm. I'm all somebody else's stuff. Yeah. And blue, I will just might throw one out there that I don't let nobody else get. <laughs> hey, there it is right there. Man, give, give out, it was a great honor to talk to you, brother. Give out your Instagram and all your social media so people can check you out. Um, if they want, let people know how to book you if they want to book you for sessions in Las Vegas, or LA, Hawaii, wherever you're going to be at in the studio. Let people know what's going on with you. Yeah, um, all of that stuff, you can just go to the website, sbclaimmusic.com. Um, that's the best way to contact me, whether it's for studio time, whether it's for management, uh, distribution, whether it's for production, writing, whatever it is. Um, aside from that, most social media platforms, uh, you can find me there at Left Costa, that's L-E-F-T-C-O-A-S-T-A. Um, I think on Instagram, I might be Left Coast. Yeah. Yeah. But for most of the rest of them, I'm Left Costa. Or you can just Google Shane West Coast McClain. Put that in, all kinds of stuff pop up, you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, that's what's up. Hustle man! Hustle man!